Welcome to CEO Interviews, a production with GORCOM in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives about recent important developments at their companies. With us today, I'm really happy to have again Ryan Brown. He's co-founder of Tetra Biopharma, trades on the CSC under the stock symbol TBP. That's Terry Bob Peter. Now, if you recognize Ryan but not the name, the company recently changed its name from Grow Pros to Tetra Biopharma. That's what we're going to be here to talk about. Uh, for those of you new to the story, and you've got to follow this because Tetra Biopharma has really been doing some great things in the space. They've got two divisions. The pharma division, which is developing botanical-based pharmaceuticals to help alleviate symptoms related to pain, insomnia, and anxiety in patients diagnosed with cancer, uh, chronic, and terminal diseases. Now, more than just lip service because it sounds like a, a lofty goal, the company has a pipeline of drugs already under development, including a late stage uh, phase three product. The company has a world-class scientific team uh, to help develop these products. Ryan, welcome to the show. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Well, let's get right into this. You've had tremendous news flow over the last three weeks. What do you attribute this all to? Well, since the changeover from GrowPros to Tetra Biopharma, we were able to uh, really uh, put the uh, you know put the pedal to the metal, as they say, uh, on the development of our, our pharmaceutical uh, prescription drugs. Um, you know, we we're moving towards starting clinical trials uh, at the end of November. Um, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of announcements and a lot of uh, work that I'll have to go in before we can start these trials. Uh, and obviously, we want to keep the uh, investor community up to date. Um, so that's been uh, that's been the catalyst for a lot of the news that we have uh, that we have released is our preparation for clinical trials starting in November. Uh, I work in what I like to call, and a lot of our viewers now know that I call it V 2.0. We had the you know marijuana one, weed 1.0. Everybody in the world tried to put out press with saying in the marijuana space just to get lift on the share price. Uh, obviously, Tetra Biopharma is not there, but there are a lot of many uh, there, there are many Me Too companies still out there. How do you differentiate from everybody else in this space? Well, uh, the biggest differentiating factor for us is that through our subsidiary Phytopain Pharma, we are a biopharmaceutical cannabis company. I think right now you're seeing in the space you're seeing companies position themselves either towards being a recreational cannabis company, a medicinal cannabis company, which is what exists under the current ACMPR right now, uh, or companies like us that are really going the pure biopharma way, where our goal is to create recognized licensed pharmaceutical products that contain biological cannabis, being organic plant matter, uh, not synthetic cannabinoids, uh, and make these products available to both the physician community as well as patients across North America. So that's a business model that, uh, you know, to at least to our knowledge, there's uh, maybe a handful of companies in the entire world that are focusing on that, whereas other pharmaceutical companies that typically enter the space are focused on synthetic cannabinoids, uh, which is not uh, not in our, uh, our our business plan. We want to focus on bringing the natural healing, biological healing propri properties of cannabis into the structured pharmaceutical uh, drug world. Now, you've got that subsidiary and you get two other subsidiaries. Tell us a bit about each that, that gives that breadth in the company that just other, other small caps just don't have. Sure, so the first uh, subsidiary is Agrotech. Um, Agrotech is tasked with developing and acquiring um, natural health products that are certified natural health products with registration numbers, uh, marketing and advertising approval. Um, the reason behind this, number one, is to create secondary revenue streams uh, once we own these formulations. Uh, the process of incorporating them into manufacturing and distribution uh, without spending a lot of our own resources uh, becomes a very viable option. But more importantly, right now, we're amassing an inventory of registered, uh, approved uh, organic compounds uh, that are tied to the ability to be able to market and advertise these for the treatment of specific ailments. Uh, what that's going to do is, as uh, Phytopain Pharma continues to develop its pharmaceutical products, it gives us an inventory of other organic compounds that we can mix in with our uh, active ingredients being cannabinoids, uh, THC, CBD primarily, um, allowing us to keep our pharmaceuticals as biological and as natural as possible. Um, the other subsidiary, GrowPros, uh, does have an active act. ACMPR application that's working through the process with Health Canada, um, but more importantly right now is tasked with sourcing and identifying opportunities in the cannabis space for Phytopain Pharma, as well as sourcing out raw material um, for the manufacturing um, of the pharmaceuticals as well as for the clinical trials. 
Um, so right now it's it's providing the uh, the in the providing the um, the industry insight for the science and the distribution teams. And that's what I really love about the company. It seems like you're one of the few uh, almost vertically integrated from from top to bottom. And that's a huge differentiator from, from everybody else in the marketplace. I just want to add that in as my, as my own comment, why I see you guys as a fantastic long-term sustainable company. Now, you talked about sourcing product, and that was the next question I want to talk to you about. You announced a, uh, a medical cannabis supply agreement with Afria. They're going to provide you access to cannabis for medical purpose regulations. What's the significance of that? Why Afria as opposed to just sourcing it from anywhere? Well, importantly for us, we, uh, as mentioned, you know, Phytopain Pharma is a, we, we are a pharmaceutical cannabis company. So when sourcing out a raw material, it was very important to work with a company that, number one, understands the requirements of a producer in a pharmaceutical environment. Uh, everyone knows that the ACMPR has extremely high quality assurance standards, uh, but pharma takes that to a whole other level. Um, so we, you know, we quickly identified uh, Freya as being uh, the right combination uh, of low of low cost, high quality, large scale production, which obviously allows us to keep our pricing of our products reasonable. Uh, but more importantly, that we're willing to invest and willing to undertake the development of this uh, active pharmaceutical ingredient. Uh, we're not just purchasing a few strains from them. We are working in conjunction with them to develop proprietary blends that will be used for the clinical trials of PP001, which is our smokable inhalation-based product, as well as bringing that product to commercialization. Uh, the API that we use during the clinical trials is the same API that we must manufacture, must use in manufacturing. Uh, so this uh, agreement with Afria is, is more than just a supply agreement. This is a, a development agreement where we're going to work hand in hand with them to help, help develop the raw material that will be used for our pharmaceutical products moving forward. And that's, and that's important for everyone at home to understand that you've got to have that consistent high quality product to produce pharmaceuticals so that when you're, when you're making your case to doctors for subscribing, uh, prescribing your product in the future, uh, you can point to that consistency and high quality, correct? Correct, and it's also a matter of us to, of you know aligning ourselves with a company that's got similar long-term visions. Uh, as you know, as recreational cannabis unfolds, we want to make sure that we're dealing with companies that see a value in the pharmaceutical in the pharmaceutical cannabis industry uh, and that see a value in the research that that we're conducting. Um, obviously, companies that are focusing more on recreational cannabis may not share that same. Uh, opinion, uh, but the team at Afria, um, they you know come from a pharmaceutical background. They understand exactly where we're going, and uh, we're very uh, very excited about partnering with us uh, on these uh, on this project. Now, now that's a collaboration on the supply side. Now, you've also announced a big collaboration on the development side, and that's a big collaboration agreement with McGill University, which again, for everyone at home, I think just brings that third party validation to the table. That's it's not just me and a couple of guys thinking we can create pharmaceuticals here. You're you're, you're partnering with uh, Afria on the supply side, and now you've got this big collaboration with McGill. Let's talk about it, McGill and what they bring to the table for Tetra Biopharma. Well, as a biopharma company, it's very important for us that we are involved uh, both on an investment point of view as well as a participation point of view in these types of uh, projects where you have a university uh, with the, you know, of the, of the standards of, of McGill that has a genuine academic interest in developing in looking at the development of both medicinal and recreational uh, cannabis products. This is this new environment that we're going into is new for everybody. It's not just new for the politicians, for the regulators. It's also new for the universities. And a university like McGill wants to make sure that they stay at the cutting edge. Uh, when a new industry is being created, they want to make sure that they're a able to participate in that. Um, and so from, their, from an academic point of view, it's a no-brainer for them. Uh, and from us, it's a no-brainer, obviously, to align ourselves with the, one of the most well-respected universities in the world, uh, as well as with the National Science Research Council, uh, which is going to subsidize the, the cost associated with these, uh, with, these, with these products. So, I mean, in a nutshell, we've got the government, you know, flitting half the bill for our development of our patents our protocols that go around the development of our, our, our consumer you know our consumer products as well as our pharmaceuticals uh, and to be able to use the resources of McGill and obviously the highly highly sophisticated teams that operate in the McGill research department uh, for us it was uh, we, we felt very fortunate uh, to be in the position to, to be granted that uh, granted that grant from the uh, from the government 
Yeah, and you beat me to the punch on that, so I'm glad you brought it up because you've got a free on the supply side, you've got McGill on the development side, and then you've also got the government recognizing, uh, validating, I think, almost how well you guys are going about your process and and subsidizing by uh, through through, uh, through the grant that you received. So I think that's a that's a triple win for for you and your investors. So congrats on what you guys well, are, able to, are able to do there. And, you know, something that we have identified with, you know, we're obviously in discussions with multiple different government agencies in Canada, in the U.S., federal, provincial, as well as different academic institutions. And the one thing that they've all, get, you know, the one feedback that they've given us is we were, we've been waiting for someone to conduct this type of research. We've been waiting for companies to raise and spend the capital required to conduct true clinical trials to develop pharmaceutical products as well as to develop uh, more consumer over-the-counter type products. Uh, so when the government is validating our scientific approach, um, I think they were actually hoping some of the licensed producers were going to do this, but the reality is they're already in such a capital-intensive industry that and often when their business model is based on growing and distributing cannabis, they can't necessarily justify spending the research dollars that we're going to spend uh, as a science and research company. So that's in our wheelhouse to spend the capital to develop these products, protect these processes, uh, and create as much uh, value for ourselves and our shareholders um, by developing this, uh, this science. And when you can have partnerships with major universities and funding from the federal government, uh, I think that that's a, a no-lose scenario for us. Yeah, and, and, and if I may add to that, I don't think it's just only a case of they don't have the money because they're focusing so hard on the on the uh, growth and distribution, but they just don't have that expertise. You're talking about two different worlds, right? The, developing things as, as a pharmaceutical company versus growing and distributing, it involves a completely different uh, set of people and skill sets that, that you guys do have. Exactly, and that's where we see it as, a, you know, with the agreement with Apria is a perfect it's a perfect scenario for us because it saves us having to spend the infrastructure, spend the capital on building the production infrastructure, and it saves them on all, like you said, having to acquire a, a science-based team uh, to develop these products. So uh, we're both going to win on the on the consumer end uh, and science end. Ryan, you've talked about some amazing things here from from ground from the ground all the way up, literally. Uh, a question I've got to ask that people probably have at home as they're watching right now is. These are some pretty big goals. Do you have the money? Do you have the, the resources to see these things through? Well, as a as a junior, you know, biopharmaceutical company, we're we're always in the process of raising capital. Uh, we're always looking at other, you know, the most logical and least dilutive financing options possible. Uh, we recently announced uh, a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar raise. Um, which we ended up having to oversubscribe uh, to the tune of almost $200,000 uh, based on the interest uh, amongst our existing uh, investor groups and existing networks in Canada. Uh, you know, that, that, so, that financing sold out in about two days. Uh, based, on the, based on the interest that we've got from U.S. analysts, uh, institutions in the U.S., uh, we're basically waiting on our DTC eligibility, which should come through any moment now, uh, allowing American retail investors to purchase the stock electronically, uh, which should create a, a huge demand uh, and open up more avenues for larger, more institutional style financing uh, as we keep on moving forward. Um, so right now, we, uh, based on that last raise, we have enough, uh, enough capital to get us through phase one of our clinical trials. Uh, and we can, and you will, we'll be going back to the market uh, in a less dilutive manner to raise more capital to continue to fund these moving forward. Uh, what's important to uh, for shareholders of Tetra Biopharma to understand as well is we still have a lot of uh, outstanding warrants that have been quite aggressively exercised over the last. Uh, 30 days, 60 days. So, you know, bringing in to close to between 400 and 500 thousand uh, dollars from warrants. So, we still have about another million and change in that pipeline around warrants and options that would be, you know, conceivably exercised within the next eight to 12 months, uh, bringing in uh, additional capital. So, from a capital point of view, uh, we're by far the healthiest that we've ever been uh, as a company with uh, a lot of very um, interesting options that are being presented to us now uh, that were you know that were not uh, that were not available to us even uh, even three months ago. Uh, so from a capital point of view, uh, we things are, are getting increasingly better, uh, and we're we're really looking forward to a major push uh, in the United States uh, coming to the end of November. Uh, last question for you, and I'd be remiss if I didn't ask it. We're sitting here on the eve of the uh, most anticipated U.S. Pres presidential election since. I don't know, Abraham Lincoln's days. Uh, now, the bigger, 
the bigger item of interest for you is not whether uh, the Republicans or Democrats necessarily win, the, win this election, though you may have some best interest there. It's the nine states that uh, have marijuana on the ballot for both recreation and medical. What does tomorrow's election uh, mean to the company going forward, and what other kind of catalysts are you looking towards on the legislative side in 2017 and beyond? Well, I mean, it's, it's no secret, uh, you know, based on, on our submissions that we've already made to the FDA for Oregon drug designation, that the U.S. is a very attractive target market for us. Uh, there's a massive opioid crisis going on in the United States right now, and we think that we have some biological natural solutions that fit within the pharmaceutical framework uh, that will be of huge benefit to uh, American physicians, uh, as well as the society in general, to help them curb this, you know, massive opioid epidemic that they're, they're dealing with right now. Uh, from a, a regulatory point of view, uh, we've structured ourselves to operate under the current regulatory scheme, meaning that if all nine states were to vote negatively uh, and the outcome of the election was to not be favorable sort of for the recreational marijuana industry, uh, we're okay. We're still positioned to execute on our business plan regardless. Obviously, we hope to see uh, nine states out of nine states pass both uh, medicinal uh, and recreational uh, marijuana ballots. The uh, reason behind this is pretty simple, that as the every time a, a barrier to access comes down, that's good for everybody in the industry. Um, having a state like California uh, with a very, very long state history in cannabis uh, cultivation, both black market, gray market, now medicinal, um, seeing those types of infrastructures being implemented in a place like California only sets to further enhance the model that we're going to see in Canada and in other countries. So at the end of the day, any forward progress is good. Uh, particular of interest for us is the medical uh, ballot initiative in Florida. Uh, we see Florida as being a tremendous potential market for us, uh, also based on the fact that a significant population during the winter months of Florida are Canadians. Many of these Canadians are seniors who do uh, participate in the ACMPR program. So developing pharmaceuticals that they can have access to in Canada as well as in the U.S., uh, in a state like Florida would be, that would be a huge value to us. So we're obviously, uh, we're pulling uh, pulling hard for all the states and the citizens within those states that they, uh, you know, that the democratic process uh, unfolds and that they are, uh, they're able to implement these programs. Uh, and I think that a any step in the right direction uh, is good for everybody. And we're, uh, you know, as everybody is at waiting with, uh, anxiously awaiting the, uh, the results uh, of, of tomorrow's election. Well, Ryan, that alone sets the table for our next conversation because uh, anything can happen tomorrow. We're going to have a lot to talk about uh, in the coming couple of weeks, just to, just with respect to the results. But it also, we all, it's quite clear now that you have so much going on on the fundamental business side as well. So uh, thanks for joining us today because we know you're running around. The fact that you took the time out to actually uh, sit down with us and talk to both your shareholders and everybody else out there, especially on this important day, is is very much appreciated. And we're going to have you back sometime next two, three weeks. Absolutely. Great. Looking forward to it. Thanks a lot. You've been watching Ryan Brown. He's co-founder of Tetra Biopharma. The company trades in Canada on the stock symbol TBP. That's Toronto Bob Peter. But also trades in the U.S. on the stock symbol GRPOF. Look for the DTC eligibility to be announced any day now, especially our American investors. Uh, and that'll let you that'll let you start buying this company's stock uh, on, with your online brokerages and elect electronically. If you want more information about the company, get to tetrabiopharma.com. But as always, get to Agoracom, punch in the company's name or stock symbol. Take a look at the interviews we've been doing with Ryan and his team over the past several months. Get all the information you need in one concise place, and then take the time to ask questions and mingle with your fellow share with your fellow shareholders. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a fantastic day. Watch this company, not just because it's what to do in the short term, but where it's going to grow and the foundation it's laying for the next five years of its growth. Have a fantastic day, everyone. Talk to you soon.